There are three secrets you need to know when balancing your Zhiyun Weibo 3. The first secret is that you want to get the center of gravity of your camera and the attached base plate in line with the axes of the three motors. So this is your tilt motor. Imagine that there's a line extending straight through the axes coming out. This is your roll motor. Imagine that there's a line extending straight out. And then finally at the bottom is your pan motor. Imagine that there's a line extending straight up. So where those three lines intersect, you want the center of gravity of your camera and base plate to be where those lines intersect. The second secret is to not get frustrated. I've been balancing gimbals now for five years and I've learned to do it in about 60 to 90 seconds. And when I first started, I wanted to throw gimbals out the window because I found it so confusing and so difficult. But if you just stick with it and follow this video, I promise you're going to learn how. And then finally, the third secret is once you have your gimbal properly balanced, make note of all of the markings. There's number markings on all of the motors. Once your gimbal's balanced, just pull up the notes section in your phone, note what lens you have on your camera so you know the weight, and then just remember what markings you need for that particular lens. So then when you're swapping between lenses or you have to take the camera off and you need to put it back on, you just look at your notes and you see which markings you have for that specific lens and weight, and you'll set up your gimbal in 20 seconds. Okay, so you may be wondering why is it important that I balance the gimbal? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, the better balanced your gimbal is, the smoother footage you're gonna get. Secondly, you're gonna protect the motors. If the gimbal is not properly balanced, you could damage your gimbal. The third thing is that it preserves battery life. The harder the gimbal needs to work to balance itself with the motors, the more battery you're gonna burn. So let's get it set up properly and I'll show you how to do that. And by the time we're done with this video, you will be able to set up your gimbal every time in 60 to 90 seconds. Okay, so the gimbal comes with all of these motors locked. So I'm just gonna return it to its beginning state that it comes in the package so we can start from the very beginning. You also want to attach your tripod. Uh, it comes in the box, everyone comes with it. And you're gonna wanna fully charge your gimbal before we do this. So get a USB-C cable, the gimbal comes with one in the box, plug it in right here at the bottom and leave it in for about two hours. Once it's fully charged, you should have between 15 to 20 hours of runtime as long as it's properly balanced. The other things that you're going to need are the base plate that attaches to your camera, the bottom latching plate which attaches to the gimbal and then attaches to the camera base plate. And then at the end, we're also going to use the stabilizer handle and the stabilizer wrist plate, but I'm just gonna set these aside for now. Oh, and there is one more thing that you'll need, and that is this little screwdriver tool that comes right at the bottom of the latch plate. And it's really handy, so you don't need to use a kitchen butter knife anymore to tighten your screws or a screwdriver. You will always have this on you, and it's magnetic and attaches right to the bottom. The first thing we wanna do, get our camera, get our camera base plate, and attach it. On the base plate, there is a little marking that says lock and an arrow. You want the arrow facing the back of your camera and you're just gonna connect it like this. If you're a videographer or photographer, you've connected plenty of base plates to your cameras before. Get the little handy tool I mentioned and just try to get the base plate as center as possible and screw it in. Next, we want to take our bottom latch plate and you'll notice that there are markings running from zero to 10. We're going to have the 10 point towards the back of the gimbal. So let's get the gimbal here and we're just gonna unlock all of the motors. There's these little newly designed motor lock switches that I love. So I'm just gonna start by unlocking the tilt, which is up here, then the roll, and for now we can leave the pan motor actually locked in. So we should have our gimbal. We have the LCD screen facing us and the trigger pointing forward. And we have the roll arm on our right side. It's not around on the left side. It, we tilt it up to the, to the right side. Finally, we have our tilt latch and arm with these arrows on the top pointing towards us. So we just flick open the latch panel here we get our bottom base plate. And if we want, we can take out this screw that's in it. We're not gonna need it, but for now, I'm just gonna 
roll it towards the front and kind of leave it there. And remember what I said, we're gonna take the 10 markings and they're gonna to be towards the back. So zero at the front, 10 towards the back. I'm gonna slide it in. You should hear it click. And when it's in properly, it won't come out unless you push this release button. Okay, so it's in there. And just put it about middle way for now and then flip the latch locked. And then we take our camera with the base plate attached. Remember the lock marking is pointing towards the back and we're gonna just put it over, slide it back towards the 10 and you might have to push this little, there's a little button to push in that just basically unlocks it so you can slide it. And then you, again, you should also hear it click and it should not be able to move unless you use the release button. And then I'm just gonna lock it in place. One thing I should also mention is that when you're balancing the gimbal, get it in your ready state. So if you're gonna have a mic on it or you're gonna have a variable focal length lens, get the lens extended to the focal length that you're going to shoot with. So that way, once you set it up and then you make adjustments to, you know, you take off your lens cap and you change the lens length and everything, you're not throwing off the weight. You wanna get your camera in the ready state. I actually leave the lens cap on because sometimes when you're balancing, things can bump around and I don't wanna crack the glass. So I leave the lens cap on, balance it, and then at the very end, I take it off and make minor adjustments. But let's just leave it on for now. Okay, so the first thing we want to balance is the tilt motor. That's the top motor on your right side when the gimbal's facing forward with the LCD screen to the back of you. So we're just going to flick the lock down and you can see that the camera rotates freely. That's exactly what we want. And now our goal is to adjust the camera so that it's going to stay like this when I let go. So right now, there's too much weight going this way because when I let go, you see that the camera gravity pushes down and it falls like this. So that means there's too much weight on this side of this axis. Remember, we wanna get the center of gravity in line. So all we do is flick open this lock down here, the bottom one, not the top one. And then you'll notice that the base plate slides. So again, if there's too much weight this way and I let go, it's gonna fall down. If I have too much weight to the front and I let go, it's gonna fall down. The whole goal is to get the center of gravity of the camera and the base plate in line with this axis. Remember, that was the first secret. And all you need to do is make micro adjustments. Even the smallest adjustment will change it. Okay, so too much that way, too much, too much, too much. Okay, that looks about good. And when you lock it, you should be able to let go and the camera lens faces pointing forward without moving. If it's falling back or falling forward too much, then it's not balanced. Now we are going to point the lens towards the ceiling. We are going to adjust this latch here. So we're gonna unscrew it once it's facing pointing towards the ceiling. And what this little latch does is allows us to rotate the camera or should I say move the camera this way and this way when the lens is pointing up. So if I go down and I let go, it falls this way. If I go too far in the other direction and I let go, it falls this way. Again, so we want the center of gravity of the camera and the base plate in line with the axis of this motor somewhere like that. It's micro adjustments. And now the lens should face the ceiling with me letting go. So that's balanced there. I'm going to lock it now. Before we go any further, I'd just like to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this video and you're finding it helpful, it's helping you set up the gimbal, please click the like button and please subscribe. It helps my videos reach more people so that I can continue creating videos like this. And then finally, if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comment section below. I try to get back to every question within 48 to 72 hours. Now, the next thing we wanna do is the roll motor on the back. So we can just put the camera facing forward like this and then unlock the roll motor. And again, if there's too much weight on this side of the axis of the roll motor, when I let go, it's gonna drop like this. And if there's too much weight on this side, it's gonna drop like this. This one is actually pretty balanced already. Maybe a little bit. Yeah, so you can see it's falling a little bit that way, which means I need to pull the weight this way. 
So all I'm going to do there at the bottom of the latch plate, let me flip it around this way so you can see better. At the bottom here, we just want to slide everything that way because we were falling down this way. So I'm just going to loosen this, maybe push it like one or two markings, just barely, it's just micro adjustments. Let's try that. Let's see what happens now. Let's see if it's falling. Nope. So it's balanced because it's not falling that way or it's not falling that way. I'm telling you, this is not that difficult. You will get this. It takes some time the first time, but once you follow these steps, you're gonna be doing this in no time. Finally, we have the last motor and that's the pan motor. It's the one that's down here. This one is a little bit tricky because the way you have to hold it. So what you do is hold the gimbal parallel to the ground like this, and you have to hold it like this somehow. So it's a little bit tough. And then we're going to unlock this motor which is right here on the left side of the gimbal. Just be careful because when you unlock it, you know, this thing can fly around and if you have your lens cap off, it might hit something. So just careful here. So you're gonna unlock it slowly. So I'm gonna point the pan motor towards you guys. So again, the same basic methods we've been following. If I let go, it's falling this way, which means I need to push the weight of the axis that way. So I'm gonna unlatch it. And I'm just going to, again, micro, micro adjustments here. Now it's falling that way, so I did it too much. I told you just tiny, tiny adjustments. Like I said, this one's a little bit harder because the way you have to hold the gimbal. And if you're having a hard time moving or adjusting, you can put it upright and then it slides a little bit easier. So now I'm going back down. See, it's still going that way. Gonna come back up and pull it a little bit towards my left, your right. That should do it. Okay, so it's not falling down that way. It's not falling down that way. I'm just gonna lock this motor. Okay, here's the test. When you put your gimbal on level ground and you point the camera in any direction with it turned off, it should stay pointing that direction. And if it does, congratulations, you've perfectly balanced your gimbal. But there is one more thing to do, and that is turn on your gimbal, make sure it's fully charged, like I said, by pushing the power button down here on the base. You're just gonna put it on a flat level surface with the tripod, you're gonna turn it on. And what we're gonna do is go to the menu and we are going to auto calibrate the motors. It's basically just one last thing the gimbal needs to do to see how heavy your camera lens setup is and adjust accordingly. So we're just gonna click the menu button that's on the right side of the gimbal, click on the motor, and you select that menu by pushing down on the light wheel. And then you go to auto, auto tune. You're gonna click auto tune and just let go. The gimbal is gonna shake. It's basically testing the weight. You can see it's shaking there and that's it. It's completely auto-tuned, it's ready to go, and your gimbal's all set up.